Welcome to From Zero to Kubeflow, where I'll take you through the process of installing Kubeflow from scratch. Now before we get started, make sure you have access to a Google Cloud Platform account. Well, I have a fresh project here with nothing inside. Now there are two ways to install Kubeflow. You can do it with a web form or from the command line, and we'll walk through both of those. So first, the web form. You can find this at deploy.kubeflow.cloud, and we'll need a few pieces of information. First, we're putting in our project name. We'll call it Kubeflow UI. That way we can tell it apart from our command line version. And we need an OAuth client ID and client secret. If you don't know how to generate these, there are instructions right here on the page. And we want to create permanent storage so that even if we upgrade our Kubeflow cluster, we don't lose our state. So we click on create deployment and that kicks us off. And we have everything going on behind the scenes. Oh, in the background, this is what's happening. Our project is being set up to support Kubeflow. So service accounts are being created, APIs are enabled, policies are updated, external DNS entries are created, security certificates, those are provisioned, and our Kubernetes engine cluster is created. Once, our, once we have our cluster, then all of our Kubeflow components are installed on top of it. Oh, while that's crunching away in the background, let's create another cluster using Kubeflow's command line interface. That's called KFCTL. Oh, to download the tool, we'll retrieve the binary. We'll get the latest version. Uh, this is just stored on GitHub. It's a release artifact. Here we've downloaded the binary, and now let's unpack it so that we can access it from our path. Okay, now that we have access to KFCTL, we can initialize a project directory. We need to set up a few environment variables first. We have a project ID, client ID, and client secret. Those are our OAuth credentials. And once we have those, we run the KFCTL init command. We'll give it a different name to distinguish it from our UI version. We're going to use GCP as a platform and we make sure that it knows which project we want it to deploy in. Now this command takes a few seconds. What it does is make sure that the project is set up properly. It enables all the APIs and does everything required so that we can install it. And once that's done, we'll see what it created for us. It's a directory with a single file in it. It essentially just set our environment variables. Now we'll issue the kfctl generate command. That gave us a few more files. There's a GCP config directory. This is what defines all of our GCP assets. And KS app, which is all of our Kubeflow components. We need one last command to actually apply it to our project. This is apply all. Well, this goes in and sets up all of the infrastructure that we need in our project. Once it has a cluster up and running, then it will install Kubeflow on top of it. And just like spinning up resources with the web interface, this process takes around 15 minutes for an external URL to become available. So let's check on that first cluster that we created to see if we can access the Kubeflow Central Dashboard. If we check back in on our deployment screen, we can see two new deployments. We have two for the CLI version and two for the UI. If we look in Kubernetes Engine, we can see that we also have two clusters. Well, let's look at that first cluster. That should be finished by now. Well, here we have all of the Kubeflow components up and running. Looks like they were installed properly. And if we go into services, if we look at our ingress service, we can see our external URL. If we click on that, we can access our central dashboard. From here, we have access to the Notebooks dashboard. This is where we can set up our own JupyterHub server, Kotib for running hyperparameter tuning, and Pipelines for running pipelines defined with a Python SDK. Oh, this is really your gateway to many of the most useful tools inside Kubeflow. So stay tuned for details on each of those components. But in the meantime, if you want to get started exploring them on your own, the best way to do that is 
by looking at one of the code labs. If you go to codelabs.developers.google.com, we have three different ones for you to try. These are self-guided tutorials. You'll need your own GCP account, but it'll give you all the instructions that you need. Another great place is the Kubeflow examples repo on GitHub. There are quite a few more examples, again, self-guided walkthroughs written in Markdown. If you get stuck along the way, you can find detailed guides and documentation at kubeflow.org, which is also where you can find out more about getting involved in the Kubeflow community. We're a globally distributed group of contributors who would love to hear your feedback and ideas. What does the future of Kubeflow look like? You tell us.